Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And I'm in the Polytunnel today and it's the afternoon and it's a gorgeous day. We've just been out for a hike all morning. And today this is a regular um, monthly update where I look at what I'm sowing and growing. And we start off by just having a look at how the things that we sowed in February and March are doing and what's got planted out and what's been harvested etc etc and then we take a look at what we're sowing and little seedlings and things like that that we've got still uh, growing on and also some little experiments that I've been running with overwintering stuff so I don't really bother with uh, tomatoes um, early in the season uh, or sowing them early in the season because it's just too much hard work to keep the plants going uh, when I've got so much cool, so many cool weather crops in the polytunnel, for example. Uh, so most of my tomatoes get sown, in fact, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and they're just germinating now. But I have got some overwinter tomatoes and some overwintered peppers, so I'll just show you those. So um, with that, let's get on and have a look around. So let's make a start in the polytunnel, and we'll look at the earliest stuff. So here's the uh, January same potatoes and you can see that they're looking really nice and obviously it won't be very long before we're harvesting those and then we've got some February sown and we've got some March same potatoes so we've got a really nice succession of potatoes in here and we've got some more down the other end. Uh, all the main beds in the polytunnel are really lush still and still providing with a fantastic uh, crop of brassicas and all this stuff is going to stay in here and we'll keep on harvesting it for another three or four weeks and then we'll transition uh, this bed over to tomatoes and peppers and you can see a really nice uh, selection of salads in here as well as all the stuff outside now i won't show you everything that's going on on the plot because if you want to see that uh, take a look at one of the tours and i did one um, a week or so ago and then on a little growing bench here most of the stuff i've got is in the greenhouse i'll show you that in a minute but uh, I've got some onions, I've got my last little batch of uh, brassicas that I sowed a few weeks ago and so I've got a red, a red drum head there, I've got broccolini at the back, kale at the front, uh, marathon calabrese at the back and then the last uh, 12 here are sprouts. I've got some leeks here, I've got some more onions, in fact they're shallots, there's a bun shallots some more kales lots more um, this succession I think was a, is just over a month old now here of um, marathon at the back calabrese red cabbages at the front some more uh, calabrese at the front there and then some flowers and some more kales I've got lots in the ground as well I'll show you those in a minute uh, I've got some more onions and some more onions so these onions are ready to plant out really, I just left them just to show you. Uh, I'll probably be planting them tomorrow. So the other big bed in the polytunnel is still doing really nicely. I've got lots of interplanted salads, but mostly I've got uh, early brassicas. So a lot of my focus is trying to keep us in really abundant uh, veg uh, for the hungry gap. And that means bringing on some early cauliflowers, uh, calabrises, uh, sprouts and things like that. So I know most people are finishing with the sprouts, but we're just starting with our uh, early season sprouts. And then we've got some carrots, which are growing on really nicely in here. And early um, French beans in here. More early carrots. More early carrots down there. Then there's the early sweet corn. That's starting to grow nicely. And that'll, so I'll be selecting one of those varieties to uh, bring on in the polytunnel and we'll probably have two tubs uh, probably with four maybe five even um, uh, sweet corn and then one of them will go home uh, so that we don't mix the uh, varieties up uh, in the polytunnel we don't want cross germination and it's some really nice peas they're growing well Oh, and I've got some early runner beans and those early runner beans will be in pots in the polytunnel as well. A quick look at what we've got outside in the coal frame. So we've got carrots in here, really nice early peas at the back of this uh, coal frame and peas for shoots at the front. 
and these are ready now to go on supports and that means this uh, coal frame top needs to come off and that will probably happen tomorrow and most of the coal frames are just really lush at the moment with uh, all sorts of salads so we've got lo oh, loads of radishes loads of lettuces um, loads of perpetual spinach true spinach chard you know all those sorts of things we've been harvesting radishes now for about three three weeks i think and as you can see these are french breakfast and they're really great and uh, we've got uh, more than we can eat at the moment and we've got three beds of early brassicas and these are all interplanted with radishes and we've got quite a nice selection here we've got hungry gap kale we've got uh, carvalho nero and we've got dazzling blue kale uh, and we're looking forward to uh, getting these spring planted brassicas replacing the overwintered ones because I need those beds cleared. So we're in the mini greenhouse at the moment. I've got some really nice kales, I've got some Tessie, Cantrix, uh, Navara, Bijou and Moon Red and those are all doing really nicely. And then I've also got some Roxy, that's a beautiful lettuce, really excited to uh, get a new crop of that. And we've got some burpees golden uh, beetroot and then we've got some boltardi in here and we have got quite a lot of boltardi in the ground already um, boltardi you can plant a little bit earlier than the uh, burpees golden and then we've got lots of onions so we've got elisa craig um, red baron and then what have we got down here we've got zebrun and we've got stir on We've got that red Brunswick which had really bad germination. Some Calcots and we've got some Leela and I don't really remember there was two trays of onions in the polytunnel as well. So onions haven't really been that great so far. Germination has been really patchy. Some trays have just germinated 100% and then others have been quite poor but uh, we've got plenty. And then just here I've got my first succession of the uh, purple graffiti cauliflowers. And a few more leeks and then a few more peas and just a few more brassicas now a lot of people I know have huge numbers of peas but I find that uh, just this sort of number of aldermen that's enough um, and I just plant like a little batch of this every few weeks and I just succession sow them basically because you know the aldermen is so prolific you just get so many peas off them um, and you know the more plants you plant of course the less peas you get so just a handful of uh, well i don't know how many there is here so six twelve just 12 plants will give you know hundreds and hundreds of peas a week so that's plenty and so i mentioned that uh, i sow very few tomatoes at this time of year just because i just don't have the space that i can guarantee is going to keep frost free um, so there's just some yellow uh, pear drop cherry type tomatoes uh, here and just some trailing ones here and some more trailing ones down there but most of the fun stuff that I'm doing with tomatoes is at home so I'll show you that in a few minutes so just finishing off on the plot um, I'll just throw up a few pictures actually just so you can see the overview of what the plot looks like at the moment um, we're harvesting something like 200 pounds sterling uh, worth of edge uh, every week at the moment and that's just nudging up nicely as we move into mid-spring and uh, so I'm really happy everything seems to be growing really well um, I'm hoping to take the covers off the coal frames in maybe a week maybe two weeks time something like that it doesn't really matter at the moment because they're just providing a shelter and there's no rain um, and there's no rain forecast really for the next 10 days so there's no real rush to uh, take them off there's no real advantage and so next thing is we'll just talk about what we're growing for uh, in April and I'll, bung it, I'll show you that on the computer but just kind of the overview you know mostly the focus in April are the squashes uh, and so all the successions uh, second successions as well uh, and just kind of reserves so obviously I've grown I've sowed most of my tomatoes but then I will sow a second crop of tomatoes uh, just in case some of those fail and I won't need to sow very many because they're all looking pretty good at the moment 
Um, and what I'll do mostly with the tomatoes though is later on in the season I'll be take I'll be taking side shoots uh, and I'll be propagating those. So I won't need to sow them, um, you know, in, in the sort of June July time when I get my late uh, crop of tomatoes sown. So I think that's pretty much it. So I'll head home and I'll show you the stuff that we've got at home and how that's growing and then we'll get on the computer and I'll show you uh, all the plans for April. And yeah, I, the other thing to point out is that everything I'm going to talk about, uh, all everything you're going to see on the computer, the database and all that sort of thing, that is all available and it's all shared with uh, YouTube followers and you can get the links to that and take your own copies of the database or you know browse it, whatever you want to do to your heart's content. Uh, all the instructions for that are in the description. So with that, I shall get home and I'll see you in a minute. So I'm back home now. Uh, I'll just show you around here. Almost all of my uh, gooseberry cuttings have sprung to life now. So I'm really pleased with those because I've had some problems with the gooseberries on the plot. And so it's nice to uh, have some new potentially and uh, replacement plants uh, growing on for next year. So first I wanted to show you some of these overwintering uh, tomatoes. So these were the tomato plants that uh, I harvested the last tomatoes off in January and I took cuttings off those plants and I planted those cuttings and these are the cuttings. So I've got three uh, pots of these and as you can see I've got quite a few tomatoes on them already. Uh, and loads of flowers, so I'm quite pleased with them. I do this variety, which is uh, Red Robin, does tend to get a little bit of mould on the leaves, but what I found is you just pinch that those leaves off and uh, they seem to grow on just fine, so no problem there. And then these are the uh, earliest uh, peppers that I've got. Just like the tomatoes, I'm not really growing uh, particularly early peppers, but uh, these aren't bad. And these are early varieties, so there's lipstick and napier, and they're earlies, and then the ones at the back are uh, giant red marconi. And then these are my main crop peppers, there's a few cucumbers there, and these are my main crop tomatoes just germinating, and there's a few peas here. And these monsters, and you can see the flowers on them are my stock plants uh, tomatoes and they've been overwintered so they are seeds that germinated in the polytunnel uh, just volunteer seeds and of course they're growing massive horrible leggy plants but all I'm doing is taking cuttings and you can see them in there they're actually I hope you can see rooting in there quite nicely and that's the second batch of cuttings that I've taken and the first batch is all potted up so these are my main crop uh, brassicas uh, so I've got the collects there red Russian kale at the back reflex kale at the front uh, sprouts here it's interesting how the sprouts always seem to take a lot longer than everything else. So there we are, which is doing pretty well. And then I've got these two overwintered pepper plants and I'm quite excited about these. And they've got uh, some nice flowers on them now. And uh, so I'll just keep tickling those. And I've got two of those plants and that one's got flowers on as well. So I'm definitely planning to do a lot more work on uh, overwintering things a bit more intentionally than these sort of accidental experiments but of course I'm getting a little bit of aphids on these so I do need to do something about that and I've got my next succession of lettuces That's it. so let's take a look at April right so we're on the computer now and I thought I would just quickly show you uh, all the stuff that we sowed in March and there's quite a big collection of this stuff so I won't go through it all but uh, yeah, I'll just go through and um, where you see multiple things like, for example, three lots of zabun. That means I sowed that three times. And I love scrolling through this, I must admit. Uh, and I'll just point out this database is available for you to take a look at uh, if you want to. Uh, just look in the description. And so let's have a quick look at April. 
And again, I'm not going to go into too much detail of this. I'll just scroll through quickly. But as you can see, there's still quite a few tomatoes to sow. Uh, and these are all the outdoor tomatoes. And almost all of these are blight resistant varieties. Uh, but there are a couple of uh, non blight resistant ones in there that I'm taking a chance on. And of course, there's all the squashes, summer squashes, cucumbers, and, and things like that. And yeah, another quite nice selection. Quite a few of these are second successions of the ones that I sowed in March. And there's even a few third successions in here. And then finally, I thought I would just show you just a few of the things that I have want to draw attention to. Um, so the first one is uh, Burpees Golden Beetroot. So if you're only familiar really with the red beetroot, like a Boltardi for example, I do recommend that you try these Golden Beetroot. They are absolutely fantastic. They're a little bit sweeter, they don't bleed as much. Um, uh, the tops are really excellent and they are as good as a chard. Uh, and I think they're much better than ordinary beetroot tops. And you can take maybe 20% off the uh, of the tops, uh, just break them off uh, or cut them off uh, as an alternative uh, to growing chard. And you won't affect the uh, beetroot themselves at all. I sow them about three uh, seeds to a, to a cell and I'm looking to actually get three plants. So sometimes you have to thin a little bit to do that. And the next one is Aztec broccoli. Now this is a really interesting one. I am not gonna grow any summer broccolis um, this year. So I'll still sow um, Rudolph and Claret for um, late, well sorry, early winter and through to uh, early mid spring. Um, but I find the summer broccolis are not really great and so as an alternative I'm sowing this Aztec broccoli. Uh, it's not a true broccoli but it can be used effectively interchangeably in most recipes uh, just like a purple spreading broccoli. So I'm growing that and it's much more prolific and it's really designed for summer harvesting so that's Aztec uh, broccoli. And I'm also growing a lot more of this kind of green sprouting so rather than big calabrese heads which i'm still growing a few of uh, i'm growing more um, broccolinis tender stem broccoli green sprouting broccoli all those sorts of um, all pretty much equivalents really um, just i find it's easier uh, to manage that because i often don't need uh, a full calabrese head um, but a handful of these little um, effectively like a side shoot on a calabrese but more prolific than uh, traditional calabrese side shoots it's just more convenient for me to harvest in small quantities like that and again something i really do recommend are these uh, graffiti cauliflowers uh, they're a beautiful uh, summer cauliflower and because they're purple obviously you've not got no issues with them kind of going creamy or anything like that they're designed to be purple they really do look like this um, sometimes they do spread a little bit but they're just fine spread you know there's no problem with them spreading um, they just taste exactly the same and uh, so don't worry about that and then cucumber melons we everybody loves um, these cucumber melons in salad mixes um, and again they're incredibly prolific we grow them in hanging baskets and they just hang down with like, you know, dozens and dozens of these little, um, about the size of your thumb, um, little kind of lemony cucumbers, really lovely. Uh, so them about now. Um, we're also growing a lot of different varieties of kale, but this is one I'm particularly excited about, Dazzling Blue Kale. It's again, it looks really nice. It's extra nutritious because of this purple uh, in the stems. And it's effectively a bit like a Cavallo Nero, um, but the leaves are just that little bit bigger and you know, again, really prolific in summer. I thought I'd recommend one lettuce. If you were to only grow one lettuce all year round, it would be Grenoble Red. What a fabulous lettuce. It's really good uh, in summer, um, but it's absolutely amazing in winter. So one lettuce to beat them all. 
and then something else to sort of liven up your salad mixes a little bit I would say it would be golden purslane much prefer it to the green purslane harvest it continuously and really heavily and it just keeps on growing at a phenomenal pace and it's a really crunchy really nice tasting uh, addition to salads you can eat the stalks and the leaves and it's full of omega-3 oils it's i think it's the richest source of omega-3 oils in the vegetable world certainly in the salad world and then <laughs> you hardly need any introduction does it but french breakfast radish um, and the reason i've popped that on here is because a lot of people sow it in the ground but i highly recommend sowing three or four um i sow four uh, seeds in a small plug in a 40 cell tray uh, so that's a lot of radishes um, and I just plant them out when they're about an inch and a half tall uh, because you've sown three or four in a clump they bind together really well um, so when you take them out of the cell the uh, soil doesn't all fall away um, and it's a great way to get a head start especially if you're growing them in winter so we've been harvesting these for a few weeks now um, and yeah it, it takes a long time for them to germinate in the soil in winter but if you germinate them in the house it's a great way to get them going uh, really early for a nice early crop so for next year so some french breakfast radish in the house new zealand spinach now obviously spinach is fabulous at the moment um, but you know come june july time it just doesn't last very long it very quickly bolts uh, and that's the time you want to have your new zealand spinach growing really nice and strong so late march early april it's time to uh, get it sown and then plant it out in june and then you've got really nice big plants uh, middle of june july time and that's when your true spinach is basically not worth sowing uh, but your New Zealand spinach completely takes over and it keeps on going until sort of October time by which time your true spinach is uh, back on form and then almost there trumpuccinos uh, we grow these in the polytunnel uh, we get an earlier crop than courgettes and they're fantastic the whole neck here uh, is uh, free of seeds and are much bigger uh, than courgettes but the main thing is just you know they're earlier uh, they're more flexible uh, and they just look amazing and then finally we have decided make your own choice here uh, that we're only going to grow crown prince uh, winter squash this year when we've grown all sorts of different things um, but crown prince is the winner for us it's really prolific keeps really well it's much more nutritious than butternut squash um, and yeah that's all my growing so there we go that's the end of this video I enjoyed it I love feedback lots of hints and tips uh, from other people uh, would be really nice and I'll see you soon